No photos on the dance floor, three decades of Berlin club culture. Uh, th- this is a fairly cool. I stumbled across this recently because I want to visit some exhibitions when, I, when I'm over there soon. And there's this really cool exhibition called Free Deck, or it's called No Photos No Dance Floor. And I think it profiles loads of really influential Berlin club photographers, club photographers, excuse me, who have kind of dug into their archives and taken pictures from, you know, the, the onset of the whole clubbing revolution in 1989, which might have corresponded with the fall of the Berlin Wall. Don't quote me on that uh, until the present time. And the pictures are super cool. I'm going to run through some of the images and some of the things now. This is from the British Journal of Photography website. We'll just quickly go through it now. Um, three decades of club culture. And as you can see already, you've got a really cool picture here that's from the 80s, I think, this picture is taken from. No, 1992 by Wolfgang Tillmans. Again, a very um, famous Berlin-based uh, contemporary artist. I think he's still in Berlin, but he has loads of exhibitions here in London. You'll be familiar with him if you type his name into YouTube. He's got some great lectures, some great coffee table books. Um, he even releases records on Dick's Cog as well, so he's fairly immense in the culture. A real, a real big figurehead in the scene overall. He's got this amazing picture of these two dudes sitting up against a wall, one armor against the other. One's wearing an amazing old pair of like, I'm gonna say air spans. I think they're air spans. I'm gonna say Nike air spans. They look like Nike air spans to me, but I'm not too sure. Correct me in the links if you know. The other guy's wearing a pair of Dr. Martins, and the other dude's wearing just for training checks. I think, I think those are feelers. I think so. I'm not too sure, but yeah. But the most interesting part of it is the dude's earrings. The jewelry is amazing. The guy in the sea cap. So he's got this really chunky, sort of like clamshell looking um, rings, a massive nose ring. And then a massive kind of earring and and one that goes at the top of the earlobe. Really, really cool. Again, it's really funny when you look at these pictures because this stuff could completely look like, you know, it wouldn't look out of place if it came, if you fast forwarded it or brought it forward into the um, nowaday culture because everyone's sort of like taking inspiration for that sort of style. But this is, yeah, a little exhibition in Berlin. I'll quickly read a copy and then we can move on. It says here, no photos on the dance floor is a new exhibition opening in Sia Berlin that charts the evolution of Berlin club culture uh, from the fall of Berlin Wall to the present day. Oh, I was right, actually, in 1989. Felix Hoffman, a chief creator at CEO, a courtesy of Berlin, moved to Berlin in 1997. As a young art history student, Hoffman recalls pinning a schedule to the inside of his apartment door during the breaks of his studies. That's just a common story you know, of all kind of, you know, <laughs> creating types that go to, like, great cities, isn't it? Like, you know, all your hopes are pinned upon this one location and you tried everything. There is something about that, isn't it? Like the idea of going somewhere at that sort of age and having so much expectations attached to it that you're just willing it into existence, right? Sometimes you go to a place and it's not even as good as you think it is, but because you've made such a big deal out of it, you just have to make it work. There's no other way. It, can, it can't go any other way. It's just going to have to make it work. Um, that kind of innocence you can't really buy. Uh, um, it, it continues. Um, it, the schedule detailed different club nights happening all over the forthcoming week. It reminded me where to go on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. He remembers this was the time when clubs only open once a week or every second week. It was a secret system, and it was an important experience for me when I was younger. No first on dance floor. A new exhibition is curated by Hoffman and guest curator Heiko Hoffman. The charts evolution of the Berlin club culture beginning on the forward Berlin war case. Okay, repeating the same thing again and again. I would not have created, co-created this exhibition if it had not been for the personal experience of a young student, he says. We've got an amazing picture here of Peaches, another kind of Berlin legend from back in the day. And someone that a lot of people owe a lot of, you know, she, she, someone that kind of gets overlooked in the terms of what we see nowadays, electronic music scene from Robin to Charlie XC. Um, to even um, what's her name? That girl's always complaining about her weight online. Binks Republic, or whatever her name is. Um, l- maybe even as uh, Azelia Banks, Azelia Igazelia, maybe one of those. They all kind of owe a lot to Peaches. She paid away for those, for that kind of like freak, um, performance freak in that regard. Like she reinvented herself a million times. Loads of different sounds, loads of different collaborations, and has relatively been able to kind of stay away from you know, the main, the curse of the mainstream for the most part, a very, very underrated artist. And um, it continues. Um, the fall of the Berlin Wall pre- precipitated what is regarded by many as the last major youth culture movement in Europe to date. The end of this physical and ideological divide gave rise to a surge of creativity, which manifested itself in the empty, abandoned spaces and fringes of former East Berlin. I'm not sure I quite believe about the whole, like, end the last kind of big youth culture even you have to go to like skate parks now and see that there is youth culture still alive 
There are kids that dress like each other all over the place. Who are into the same type of music, who go to the same sort of things, who are into the same sort of, who watch the same sort of stuff. Like, it does exist. It's probably not as widespread as it was back in the day. It's not as, uh, it does, it's not influencing the masses as much as it may have done in the past. But that's probably because of the internet, right? Because I think if you're a kid, you can probably tap into subcultures, just look at them from the outside through videos and through snapchats and instagram you don't really need to take part in it maybe back in the day there was no other way to take part in it as opposed to like trying out for a bit right you put on a couple of pair of dcs you stuff the tongue in you put some eyeliner and all of a sudden you're a goth for a week but now you can just sort of like tap into goth scene you could tap into the manga anime scene you can tap into the computer games scene and just keep it moving you don't need to kind of participate which might be the change but i think the subcultures do exist for sure um i was just thinking the other day what about all those guys like blade and like young lean and stuff right that movement there is a particular sort of movement within central europe of kids that dress like kids that are living in london but they listen to like really weird um computer generated music right that is a scene i think for the most part the kids that wear really small night hats and love stone island and stuff that's a scene i think for the most part um maybe not the coolest but is this uh, anyway the article continues a new kind of club culture rapidly emerged forming in opposition to the structures of post-war berlin and characterized by the transient openness and new electronic music around which it formed a sense of community and exclusivity were central financial success was irrelevant the majority of spaces remained open for just one or two days each week allowing the people behind them to attend the other nights which is one of the only things that's not a hyperbole in this sort of article is that idea that as in you know some places that close and you know some people that open and close really soon in a tight window sometimes the people that went have a tendency to kind of um what do you call it lionize the place that they were in right to kind of tell tales because it's not open anymore so you can maybe invent how amazing it was but berlin must be the only place where some of the places that people talk about a lot and hype up actually live up to their pretend actually live up to the you know to the folklore it's something that you don't really see in most places most places when something's been hyped up and been spoken about ad nauseum when you finally get there you're like oh this isn't that great right it's sort of like when i went to new york amazing experience but i think because i'd been so absor- so um exposed to it on the internet through the forums i was on and the videos i was watching when i got there i sort of like knew too much right you knew i was too aware of everything nothing was a surprise everything that i thought i'd see i'd i saw and some um the only thing that was actually a real surprise that i was actually really taken aback by was when we were invited up to this amazing penthouse apartment in the middle of manhattan because a friend of a friend was was doing this sort of like house sitting thing which i hadn't heard of which is another thing that kind of opened my eyes the whole house sitting thing was big in america at that time and um, loads of kids making loads of good money in the summer because a lot of the new york residents in the summer would kind of leave the city and go out state because that's when all the tourists came in so they didn't want to you know be around when all the kind of tourists were around taking pictures of the empire state building and shit so she got to look after this amazing loft apartment in the middle of manhattan and we got to see the july 4 fireworks um from the I'm assuming that's where is it was that coast wherever they do the fireworks many of them maybe, maybe isn't it the empire state building they do loads of fireworks there on july 4th and that was pretty cool that was something i really was surprised by that i wasn't really expecting to see but everything else <laughs> super 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 cash super norm um anyway it continues um yufu planet trezor e-work and the first connection of wmf and electrox electro emerges the legendary party spaces um mid early 1990s Paving the way for a new wave of clubbing in the early 2000s. Look all the names, isn't it? Influential, UFO, Planet, Trezor, Ework. Very snappy, cool names. We were entertaining the possibility of putting together a show about East German photography, says Hoffman. But then we thought about how the energy of the club culture system has been so important to over the tw- last 30 years. It was a kind of special feeling that was evolved, which should be visible in the exhibition. We've got some cool pictures here of a dude dressed up in latex, giving his all. 991 by a guy called Til- Tillman Burbs, and then you've got this amazing picture of a of a glass mirror, a speed mirror, by this really amazing um, photographer called George Nia Berids. I've seen a couple of pieces of his work online. Actually, I recommend you really check him out. He's a really really cool photographer. So it's spelled G E O R G E N E B I E R I D Z E. But I'll link him in the show notes so you guys can check out. He's got some really cool photography. And this picture is so cool. It's just basically a picture of a mirror covered in speed. It's particularly smudged out. There's a wallet on the side, a pair of cigarettes, it's a, a, a Louis Vuitton bag, a smartphone, lighter, another bit of a baggie. Just essentially the the quintessential after hours sort of like situation where everyone's sitting around trying to change the world 
while snorting, you know, all sorts of, you know, um, rancid material up their nostrils. The article goes on, but how to make invisible three decades club culture that was first the Rizavit documentary, blah blah. But yeah, I'll link the show. I'll link in the show notes you guys to read yourself if you want to check it out. But it looks like a fairly cool exhibition. I think it's on until um the thirtieth of November. So no photos on the dance floor. Um Berlin nineteen eighty nine to two today. Opens at the courtesy of Berlin in September thirteenth. So that's next week Friday and runs until the thirtieth of November twenty nineteen. So definitely check it out if you're in the area. <laughs>